The Conjuring is a 2013 American supernatural horror thriller starring Vera Farmiga, Ron Livingston, Patrick Wilson, and Lily Taylor, and features some stellar acting from Taylor and Farmiga in particular. So let's sit back and dive straight into our full synopsis. From the opening sequences, we can tell that The Conjuring is going to be pretty white knuckle. We open with Wilson and Farmiga's characters introducing Annabelle, a demon-possessed doll who we learn has the spirit of a girl inside it. As it turns out, the possessed this doll is actually being used to introduce us to Ed and Lorraine Warren, portrayed by the highly talented Wilson and Farmiga respectively, who are self-confessed cooks, as Lorraine wittingly retorts with a charming touch of self-deprecation when asked how they would describe their profession after showing a university presentation. We are then introduced to the Perrin family, Roger, Carolyn, and their five girls who have just moved into their dream house. But things are not as they might seem from the outset, with the family dog, Sadie, found dead not long after they move in. It seems as though Sadie might have foretold her own demise, as she did not seem at all settled from the moment they entered the house. There are a couple of noticeable plot holes in the story, however, one of the biggest ones coming pretty early in the movie. Roger is seen fiddling around in what seems to be a cupboard under the stairs. He then finds a passage that has been boarded up, leading down into a secret basement. Like, come on, Roger! Who buys a house without knowing there's a whole basement below? Then, things start to take a turn for the the worst. Gradually, strange things start to happen around the house. One of the parent daughters is shown sleepwalking, where she repeatedly bangs her head against a wardrobe. In the first truly disturbing scene, another of the parent daughters is sleeping when she is disturbed by what she believes is her sister playing tricks on her. It turns out to be one of the spirits haunting the house. She becomes hysterical, pointing and shouting towards the door when her sister, who is sleeping next to her, gets up to investigate. At this point, I'm sure most viewers are screaming, Switch the light on! As we were, the strange goings-on have only just begun, and in a series of disturbing incidents, Carolyn, mother to the parent girls, finds herself targeted more and more. She plays a game of hide and clap with April, but soon learns that all is not as it seems. April is hiding in another room, when Carolyn believes she has found her, only to remove her blindfold and find April behind her, just entering the room. Carolyn's experiences are only just beginning, though. She experiences the pictures being violently removed from the wall next to the stairs, and is also shockingly thrown down the basement stairs and locked in, not to mention her suspicious, unexplained bruising. Her doctor incorrectly diagnoses an iron deficiency. At this point, Carolyn decides it's time to act. She pays a visit to Ed and Lorraine Warren, who we met earlier in the movie. Ed and Lorraine have just finished a seminar, and are at first quite hesitant to deal with Carolyn. We learn later in the movie this is due to Ed's concern for his wife's mental well-being. However, after hearing of the goings-on in the parent household, Ed and Lorraine are convinced to go and take a look for themselves. At this point, things really start to ramp up. Ed and Lorraine visit the parents at home to find them all basically living downstairs due to fears for their own safety and the constant cold, according to Roger. We come to discover that it is Lorraine who is the true paranormal investigator or demonologist. Lorraine is the one who feels closest to the spirits and certainly appears to have the more prominent experience experiences out of her and her husband. The parents tell the Warrens about all the strange goings on around the house whilst they are looking around. Before they leave, Lorraine tells the parents she has seen what it is that is haunting them, and she has visions of a woman who hung herself in the front yard, and a dark, demon-like spirit who is following the family around. Ed also informs the family that it will do no good to just simply move house, as the ghoul has attached itself to the family specifically, and not the house. Ed mentions an exorcism, but Roger informs the Warrens that the family are not particularly religious and none of the girls have been baptized. Anyway, before any exorcism can be ordered from the Vatican, proof must be provided of what is being claimed by the parents. Ed enlists a team composed of a local police officer who must be there as a neutral observer, as I'm not sure he has jurisdiction over demons. Also on the team is a young assistant of Ed and Lorraine's, plus the Warrens themselves. They set up cameras and all sorts of recording equipment in attempts to prove to the church that an exorcism is warranted. They don't have to wait long for their evidence. In another disturbing scene, one of the parent daughters is thrown around the living room by her hair, only being saved by having her hair cut off. They take the tapes directly to the priest at the local church, who is understandably shocked at what he has seen. He explains his worries about the family not being Catholic, but is ultimately persuaded to reach out to the Vatican himself 
and try to push through an exorcism of the parent home. Lorraine also has an extremely worrying vision of her own daughter in the lake in front of the parent house. At this point, she panics and realizes something is badly wrong. We cut to the Warren house to see their daughter being chased by a demonic spirit, only just escaping with her life as the spirit in the Annabelle doll attacks her with a chair. Ed and Lorraine turn up just in time to save their daughter's life. The local police officer also has a terrifying experience of his own, seeing a woman dressed as a maid, repeating the words, she made me do it. The parents have now wisely moved into a motel, even with Ed's warning that it might not be the house that is being haunted, but themselves. But I'm sure they feel much safer in their new surroundings. Roger returns from the meeting with the priest to find only his older daughter. He learns that Carolyn has taken their youngest daughter with her back to the house. Carolyn's irrational behavior instantly has Roger worried. He calls Ed and Lorraine and hurries back to the house. At this point, we find out that Carolyn is fully possessed, and Lorraine quickly figures out that the spirit of a woman who committed suicide in the basement of the house, who is actually related to a witch executed during the Salem witch trials, is possessing Carolyn and trying to force her to murder her own child. Lorraine, whilst investigating the hiding place of a young boy who went missing in the 30s, falls to the floor into the basement to find a demonic Carolyn. We find out that April, the youngest parent girl, is nowhere to be found in the house, whilst Carolyn is experiencing a possessed episode in the basement, which is particularly disturbing. Whilst Ed, Lorraine, and Roger are struggling to contain Carolyn, the Warren's assistant is on the hunt for April, turning the house upside down in his efforts to locate her. In a very disturbing exchange, the spirit inside Carolyn turns to the Warrens and informs them that she, Carolyn, is already gone. At this point, Ed takes matters into his own hands and decides that he himself must perform the exorcism, as they have no time to waste waiting for approval from the Vatican. Ed and Lorraine have a heated exchange regarding Lorraine's presence at the exorcism. Due to Ed's previously mentioned concerns for his wife's well-being, Lorraine ultimately persuades Ed that this is their calling from God and they must do this together. Ed takes out what we can only assume is an exorcism manual of sorts and starts speaking in Latin at a restrained Carolyn. The spirit is extremely strong and Carolyn breaks free of her restraints in a bid to locate and ultimately kill her daughter, April. By this point, the Warren's assistant has found April under the kitchen floor and our heroes have finally subdued and banished the demon from within Carolyn, which seems to have been achieved quite easily, considering how difficult the exorcism in the basement scene. A dazed and confused Carolyn is led outside and is visibly free of her tormentor. The movie ends with the parents and the Warrens back together with their respective families, safe and happy. We also find out that the movie is inspired by true events, with the Warrens forging a long, and some might say, distinguished career in supernatural investigation. A thoroughly enjoyable and legitimate scary movie, which showcases the impressive acting talents of the four main characters, The Conjuring is proof that not all scary movies are ridiculous or silly. What did you guys think of it? Was it up to your scariness standard? 